Hey, shark fans, it's Melinda Marcellus. Welcome to Heard It on the Shark. I'll be your show host, and Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area is your show sponsor. Heard It on the Shark is a weekly interview show that airs every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on the Shark 102.3 FM radio station based in Ripley, Mississippi. Then it's released as a podcast on all the major podcast platforms. You'll hear interviews with the movers and shakers in North Mississippi who are making things happen. I'll talk to entrepreneurs, leaders of business, medicine, education, and the people behind all the amazing things happening in North Mississippi. When people ask you, how did you know about that? You'll say, I heard it on the shark. Heard it on the shark is brought to you by the Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area. We want you to get out and discover the historic, cultural, natural, scenic, and recreational treasures of the Mississippi Hills that are right in your backyard. And of course, we want you to take the Shark 1023 FM along for the ride. Musical credit belongs to Hill Country Blues guitar legend Gary Burnside and the late great Buddy Grisham playing Long Way Home from their album Acoustic Brothers, which was recorded at Sun Bear Studio in Ripley, Mississippi. This program was recorded at Sun Bear Studio in Ripley, Mississippi. Hey, Shark fans, it's Melinda with another episode of Heard It on the Shark. And today in Sun Bear Studio, I have with me Mr. Terry Baber, who is the director of the Health Alliance that is an initiative of the United Way of Northeast Mississippi. Terry, how close to right did I get that? You're absolutely correct. And and just Terry with the Health Alliance is great. Melinda, thank you for the opportunity to come and share with you this morning. This has not been your job for very long. Uh, Not for very long. I originally worked with community mental health for approximately 21 years, came into this role in February of 2024. Very privileged to have the opportunity to serve Northeast Mississippi through my role with the Health Alliance. I've been real excited to work with several different people from United Way of Northeast Mississippi. You guys have so much great stuff going on. Well, uh, thank you. The Health Alliance is one of four initiatives that we have at United Way. Our Hunger Coalition, which is probably our most well-known initiative, which serves Northeast Mississippi with our food pantries. Uh, We have the Early Childhood Coalition, which basically deals with elementary students in Tupelo and Lee County Public Schools and have promoted the Excel by five, having children above their level and especially reading level by age five. And that's been a tremendous success. And we've also assisted in other counties like Chickasaw County with that program. We also have a volunteer center, Ms. Rebecca Nelson, who serves as director of community impact and with the Volunteer Center of Northeast Mississippi. And then the Health Alliance is the fourth initiative in our organization that deals uh, primarily with addiction, but mental health as a whole. Well, our mission on this Heard It on the Shark show is to get out the information of the great things that are happening in Northeast Mississippi. And you guys make it so easy because it's all right there together. Uh, Thank you. And basically, that's who we are. For those that aren't familiar with our programs, United Way is a grant funding organization that serves approximately eight counties in Northeast Mississippi, funding grants for nonprofits. And then each of our initiatives have an area that we specifically focus on to help promote stability, well-being, health in our region and in our community. So it's an exciting place to work and to be able to impact people across uh, eight and, and literally probably a 12 county area in Northeast Mississippi. Okay, Terry, so let's start talking about what you came to say today. You guys have coming up an addiction summit. It's your third annual addiction summit. Now, last year, the director that preceded you came and talked about it, and it is just so fantastic because it's open to the public. It's open to professionals. It's just a good bunch of information for so many different people. And tell me when and where that's going to happen. Okay, this is, as you said, our 
our third annual addiction summit. It will be Tuesday, September the 17th at the Cadence Bank Conference Center in Tupelo, Mississippi. Registration begins that morning at 11 a.m. or check-in at 11 a.m. That morning, we have approximately 35 to 40 vendors that will be on site that will be sharing with participants uh, their services. And just that part, before we ever get to the summit, is well worth attending because individuals will be introduced to services in the area that may be able to help them a family member, a friends, a church member, someone that they may come in contact with who needs this assistance and knowing where to turn, knowing who to talk to or who we can call. Uh, and that's a lot of what we would do uh, during the summit. So uh, September the 17th, we have several presenters. We have nine breakout sessions that morning or that afternoon and evening. I should say our breakout sessions begin at 1 p.m., and we'll run through 5 p.m. Then we have keynote speaker, Dr. Boyette, who is going to share with us getting into the weeds with medical cannabis, our keynote speaker. And then we will have many sessions beginning at 5.30 that afternoon, many breakout sessions dealing with some of the subject matter that we've dealt with in a more extensive way that afternoon. The evening session is designed for individuals who may work, may not be able to take a full day off work, but we want to get this information into the hands of as many people as we can, and we thought that this would be a way in order to do that. The summit is held at the Cadence Bank Arena Cadence Conference Bank, Center. yes, uh, Arena and Conference Center are both at the same address, but yes, uh, Cadence Bank Conference Center. The Conference Center, okay, yes. right, okay, and it starts at 11 o'clock on September 17th. Do you have to pre-register or can you just show up? You can just show up, but we would suggest due to space limitations that individuals will go ahead and go to Health Alliance, N-E-M-S dot org forward slash summit. That is our website and register because you will need to register for breakout sessions. The sessions, we have a session that begins at one, another one at two, and then another one at three. And by the way, those breakout sessions have CEUs attached to them. So in order for an individual to receive CEU credit, and to ensure that they have a slot in the breakouts that they desire to attend, it would be wise to go ahead and register now. We take payment online as well. So if you're a business owner, why would you want to come to this summit? That's a great question. And the reason that you would as a business owner would be that you may have employees that you're aware of or may not be aware of who may have some concerns uh, regarding substance use. And by the way, we have a breakout session that will deal with opioid awareness, which has been a big thing. Opioid awareness in the workplace. Ms. Charlotte Bryant with Stand Up Mississippi will present on that very thing. But as a small business owner, number one, to have the information just in case there's an employee who needs this assistance. Number two, the education that you're going to receive about how not just opioid but all substance use tend to affect, and most business owners can tell you that because they see it, how it affects their business, their ability to retain employees, tardiness, lateness, accidents, all of the things that uh, presents a liability for a business owner. So if a business owner attends, they're going to leave with skills that they can utilize maybe in their employment practices, in their hiring practices, and even in assisting their employees with receiving the help that they need. If you are a person who is related to someone who has substance use disorder, then I know we don't say addicted to, but I mean, in, in the sure. common language, has been addicted to something that has caused them trouble in their life. Exactly. Why would this be a good place to go? Excellent. Excellent question. And if I didn't do what I do, I wouldn't be aware of the resources that are available or even how I may go about helping someone. By the way, I've had family members, close family members who have been affected by substance use. So basically, I work from a personal aspect and a personal standpoint because I know the impact. I know what it's like to have a family member who's struggling. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. And even if they were ready for help, maybe not knowing where to tell them to go. This summit is for that will answer <laughs> all of those questions. What do I need to do, if anything? What do I need to say, if anything? Because there is a time 
to say what may need to be said. And then there are times when we don't need to say anything but having this information so that when that individual needs help, wants help, seeks help, we're able to give that information to them. The other thing about the summit that may be helpful to individuals in our community and our family members is that we will have Narcan training. From 5.30 to 6.30 is a part of the summit. Individuals who go to the training will receive two doses of Narcan when when they leave. But what I found to be interesting was the information that I received by going through the training that I had no idea about. For instance, Narcan is not harmful if a person, if you think a person have overdosed and you give them a dose, but they haven't overdosed on an opioid, it won't harm them. So it's better to err on the side of caution, so to speak, when it comes to something like that that was one thing that I learned. The second thing that I learned that was really important to me was the fact that if a person has OD'd on an opioid, we give them Narcan, which brings them back, okay, they still need medical help because within four to five hours from the time that that dose of Narcan was given, they're going to go into withdrawal and they need to be under medical supervision when that happens. And I didn't realize that. Okay. This is just a great summit for just about anybody to go to. So tell us one more time when and where. Okay. It will be Tuesday, September the 17th at the Cadence Bank Conference Center in Tupelo, Mississippi. Check-in begins at 11 a.m. that morning. The summit will officially begin at noon with lunch, welcome, orientation, and we have two individuals that are going to share their recovery stories. So the public will want to come and be a part of that and tell everyone that you know, in addition to professionals, to come be a part of this summit, receive this information, leave with education, enlightenment, and empowerment that will help us help someone in our communities. Terry Baber, who is the new director at the Health Alliance, which is an initiative of United Way of Northeast Mississippi. I'm going to learn how to say that one day. You have it. That's perfect. (laughs) You're great. That's no problem. Thank you so much for coming over and telling us about the Addiction Summit that's coming up September 17th. You guys get out there and register for that. Thank you for coming over. Thank you, Melinda. And again, that website is healthalliancenems.org forward slash summit. Yes. Hey, and I'll have all that in the show notes. It's so great. people can just look down in the great. show notes and find that. Great. So so please register. If you have any questions, can reach out to us at 662-841-9133. Thank you. Okay, shark fans, that's it for this edition of Heard It on the Shark. Tune in every Tuesday at 11 a.m. to find out what's going on with our local community leaders. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion for an interview, or if you want access to this interview, go to our website, shark1023.com, and click on the podcast tab. Keep it tuned to the Shark 1023 and have a great rest of the day. The Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area was established by the United States Congress in 2009 and represents a distinctive cultural landscape shaped by the dynamic intersection of Appalachian and Delta cultures. This intersection has produced a powerful concentration of nationally significant cultural icons, including King of Rock and Roll Elvis Presley, First Lady of Country Music Tammy Wynette, Blues Legend Howlin' Wolf, Civil Rights Icons Ida B. Wells Barnett and James Meredith, America's Favorite Playwright Tennessee Williams, and No. Nobel laureate William Faulkner. The stories of the Mississippi Hills are many and powerful, from music and literature to Native American and African American heritage to the Civil War. The Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area supports the local institutions that preserve and share Northeast Mississippi's rich heritage. Begin your discovery of the historic, cultural, natural, scenic, and recreational treasures of our region by visiting the Mississippi Hills National Heritage Area online at mississippihills.org. This show is made possible by JC Media LLC in Ripley, Mississippi. JC Media owns the Shark 102.3 Classic Rock FM radio station where the show is hosted and Sunbear Recording Studio where the interviews are recorded. We need your feedback and support. If you listen to the podcast on a player like iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Amazon Music, please subscribe to the show and leave us a review. We also have an email in which you can share your feedback. That email is theshark1023 at gmail.com. Subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app or stream episodes online at shark1023.com front slash podcast. Today's episode was produced by Melinda Marsalis. It was edited by Rick Williams and engineered by Chris Marsalis. The podcast technician is Joyce Grady. 